mechanical system. Remember, I said whatever you don't see me move here and we don't see me move here is not the mechanical system or the engineering support. First, on the mechanical system is what is called the four headrest. This is the four headrest. Please come and see the forehead rest. Where the patient rest their forehead during the slip lamp procedure, they have to rest their forehead like this. Okay. Now, after the forehead rest, next is now the cantus alignment marker. This is what is called the cantus alignment marker. You can see it. This cantus alignment marker is what helps the clinician to align the patient's temporal cantus during patient setting or patient preparation. It must align with this cantus here. Now, after the cantus marker, this is the lateral cantus alignment marker. Next is the chain rest. This is the chain rest. This chain rest is for proper placement of the patient's chain during the patient preparation for your sleep lamp technique. Now, after this chain rest, next is now the chain rest adjustment knob. This chain rest adjustment knob is what enables you to take down the chain rest or take up the chain rest when you're setting your patient. Next is the hand rest. Now, this hand rest serves as a support. For especially children, there are some children that when they come, they always like things funny. So when they place their hands here, it's like see they're even driving the wheels. Like <laughs> you understand their motto. Now some children, they when they sit, their chin cannot touch it. That means they need to stand up and then they will hold and rest their chin. Now also for adults, patients that have Parkinson problems that lack manual dex, there are some persons they can't stay without. Like they don't have stability. They can hold on to this and then rest their chin during the sleep lap procedure. Now, after the hand rest, the next thing we have here, this is now the chin, this is the rail and cover. Please come and see this rail. It's just like I remember railway or train station. Look at it. It's, it has teeth, teeth inside here. Are you seeing it? This is the rail and this is the cover. Now, the reason for this rail here is that it helps for free movement. See, it helps for free movement of the instrument. You see, this is what enables these wheels to be rolling to and fro. After the rail and cover, next thing here, this is now the real start. This real start is what helps you to increase or decrease the intensity of the light. I remember I said it must be at the lowest before you put on your slate lamp your slip lamp by microscope. Next is now the joystick. This is what we call the joystick. Now this joystick you're seeing here, the function of the joystick is that it helps you to have a horizontal and vertical movement of the slip lamp. Horizontally, that means you are moving the slip lamp to the patient's right eye. Horizontally, I'm moving the slip lamp to the, to the patient's left eye. So if I want to move to the patient's left eye, I have to move this slip lamp right to my right and then forward to the patient's eye. If I want to move it to the patient's right eye, I'll move it horizontally. I'll move horizontally to the left and then forward. Now, vertically, this helps you to do to have a vertical movement of the slip lamp. The reason for this vertical movement is that there is something we call mid-range of vertical travel. Before you start a slip lamp procedure, you must make sure your joystick is set at mid-range of vertical travel. Mid-range of vertical travel simply means you have to put this instrument vertically on a midway of upward and downward movement. The reason is because when you're viewing the eye, there will be need for you to go more superior or more inferior to examine some structures. And so, to keep it at mid-range of vertical travel, exhaust this instrument to nothing. Now start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is eight. One, two, three, four. It must be like this during your instrument setting. The reason is because if I exhausted this instrument is like this and I'm examining the patient's eye. If I'm on the patient's eye and there's need for me to, for me to examine the superior eyelid, I can't go further. You see, it now begins to disrupt my test and then causing discomfort to the patient. So if you put it at mid-range or vertical, it gives you the allowance to move more superior and the same thing um, inferior and vice versa. Now, after the joystick, the next thing is now we have the gliding plate. This gliding plate you see here, please come and see the gliding plate. This is what prevents friction of this instrument. It allows free movement of my slit lamp by microscope without any jacking. It's because of this gliding plate, you are not hearing any chai, 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 all those, all those jackings on the instrument. So, after the gliding plate, the next thing we now have, look at the knobs. This is the, this is the, this is the illumination system lock screw. It locks up this illumination system, avoiding movement. This is the observation system lock screw. When I lock it, it makes the observation system not to move. And this is the base lock screw, which locks the slip lamp by microscope to this table. It wouldn't move, but when you open it, it begins to move. Now, outside that, the next thing is now the accessory drawer. 
this accessory drawer is where you can keep like here you can keep your cutting wool you can keep extra ball extra diffuser you can keep your focusing rod look at the focusing rod which you can use to demonstrate some techniques when you're teaching you can keep your fluorescent strip you can keep your shimmer strip and etc it's just for your accessories after that this is a table adjustment knob please come and see this table adjustment knob you can see here, here is written up and here down this is what helps you to take up the table and then take down the table here is the switch this is the switch for your own for putting off and putting on the slit lamp by microscope so this is the switch and after the switch the next thing let's go here is the table the table has a switch also this switch is for the table remember this is for the slit lamp by microscope and this for the table so even if this slit lamp by microscope switch is on if the table switch is not on i can't be able to operate this table adjustment knob so when it is on during your technique it allows you to take up and take down the table after this table switch the next thing is now the plug you see this plug this is what helps you connect this table towards to that socket there so that you can be able to put on the switch then the last thing is now the table wheels. Here, this is the table wheels or the table roller. It helps for mobility. This is why I can transfer this slit lamp from one room to the other without carrying it. You just move it. It's just in order to maintain mobility. But when you're doing your slit lamp procedures, please, you lock this table. You press your leg here. You press it. You lock it. You also lock this one too. For you and the patient, when you lock it, it will not move again. It's to maintain, enhance and stability and prevent mobility. Now, that is all for the mechanical system. But there's something I want to point out very fast. Look at this. What you see here is what we call, we call this the Feli Austin. This Feli Austin is being manufactured, fabricated locally by Dr. Felix or Lafisoye to help slot in your Vogue's lens during your Vogue's lens technique. So if I want to perform my Vogue's lens now, on, on slit lamp using using um, using the Vogue lens of 78D or 90D or 68D. Now all I need to do is see my phone. I clip on my phone to this fell adapter. I put my fell adapter to this eyepiece, and then this is my Vogue lens. I have to position my Vogue lens to the patient's eye. And then this is why here we perform our fundoscope using slit lamp by microscope. Hands free and very easy and simple. I don't hold on to the Vox lens and then I don't even hold on to anything. I video, I capture everything I see, everything on the patient's windows. So that is all about the part and that's all about the components of sleep lamp by microscope. Thank you very much. So